Chess friends, I hope you are doing well, today, I have a very exciting game that I played with the Torch chess engine, which is the second strongest chess engine in the world, this game is very tactical and masterful, where I initiated an attack on the king side, including sacrificing my knight in the center, so let's get started without wasting any time. I started the game with e4, and we have the Sicilian defense with e6 from Torch, the French fair eyes variation, we transitioned into the open variation, where black is likely to consider knight f6 or knight c6, knight c6 applies pressure on the pawn on e4, you can defend it by putting your knight on c3, then bishop b4 will come to pin your knight. Push your pawn forward to e5. As the knight reaches d5 to create more pressure on the c3 knight, you can initiate with queen g4, attacking the pawn directly, when the pawn moves, you can push your pawn to a3, requesting black to exchange pieces, but if black is overconfident and egoistic, he might consider queen a5, pinning the a3 pawn to the rook and additionally creating pressure on the knight on c3, this resembles black's egoistic character and selfishness. He thinks I can't do anything, but he doesn't know that I can even sacrifice my rook on the a1 square, because afterwards, knight to b3 will trap the queen completely on the board, that is my strategy, and black will be in vain and might be in his pants. So, going back to the position, Torch did not consider knight f6, he is more likely to go with the Khan variation by playing a6, but by playing a6, it creates a dark square weakness on c7 and b6, as I always say, bishop to e3 or f4 can come to join forces and siege these diagonals, where the knight can easily swim into that ocean because I am the big fish of the ocean and you are a fish food. So after knight c3 followed by queen c7 happens to control over the f4 square, I decided to go with a3 and bishop to e3, putting immense pressure through this diagonal, after b5 by black, it becomes evident that he is very angry, expressed with the b5 move, because he wants to push forward his queenside army, he thought that I would rather consider long castling by developing my pieces and forming a Napoleon army by playing f3 and g4 to invade and attack the king side, I could even go with f4. Which I actually accomplished in the game, Torch predicted correctly that I want to dominate the center, which I achieved by playing f4, this threatens to push the pawn to e5, and I will get the d6 square to dominate, where the knight can easily come to the e4 square, that is my strategy to control the d6 panel, this is like a solar panel, which produces energy and warms up the house, he responded with d6, closing the window, but it also creates a weakness on c6, that's why I decided to go with g4. This g4 marks a strong plan of playing g5, kicking out the knight. Regardless of your moves, like moving the knight and bishops to consider castling, some of you might consider playing h6 in this position, it is a move many unskilled players like 400 or 200 elo might consider, I can play g5, and after the exchanges, the knight has to move, and I can play the remarkable move g6, this marks the invasion on the king side. The knight should move to e5 or f6 to defend his territory, but if he decides to go with any normal move like bishop b7 to invade and attack the center, I can respond with g takes f7, forcing the king out to f7, making the king vulnerable and burdened, my queen can easily come to g4 to fuel the invasion on the e6 pawn. Knight c5 looks good, but bishop to h3 will come to increase the pressure, as global warming increases, planting my bishop on g5 is like a tree decreasing your attacking chances, by planting more trees on b4, I will consider queen to f4 check. You can see that the king is completely exposed, because bishop takes h6 is just a vulnerable situation for you, with the king in the middle of the board, it's like he is seated on a highway with cars passing around him very fast, after playing queen c7 and castling, it will provide me with the open f file, something like knight c6 is just a game over situation for you, because after bishop check and queen g4 come to the board, it is inevitable your position is lost. The black king can't safeguard his position, and the game will be completely over, if you are enjoying my content, like my video now, because I am going to show you more strategies and tactics that will enhance your chess skills. So, going back to the position, we discovered that playing h6 to prevent the pawn from coming to g5 is a very vulnerable move, 
which is why we have bishop to b7, putting pressure on the center pawn. After bishop g2, followed by h6 to prevent the pawn from coming to g5, now, playing g5 is not viable because the pawn on f7 is well protected by the queen, and f5 is just an irresponsible move, this is why, after h4, you can see that my pawn majority on the king side is advantageous for me. Even playing normal moves will passivate your position completely, let me examine that position, if you consider bishop to e7, which might be desirable for some chess players, then I can go with g5, after the exchanges and rook exchanges on the board, the knight is under attack, and the knight has to move back, after playing f5, it will create inevitable pressure on the pawn on e6, threatening to push the pawns forward, the main threat in this position is to capture the pawn on e6 which is also attacked by the knight, therefore, you have to block the position by pushing your pawn to e5. Then I can go with the dangerous move f6, attacking your bishop and the pawn on g7, playing g6 is the best move to safeguard your position, as you might fear that you can't protect your bishop, but don't worry, you can capture my knight on d4, however, if you play any sidelines like g takes f6, instead of taking the knight, it will just destroy your position. Regardless of your defenses on the f6 square, I can jump my knight to f5, targeting the bishop on e7, after capturing the pawn, the queen will come to h5 to deliver a check, as the knight moves to f6, a queen check will follow, and my stockfish kingdom will rise, after bishop takes g5, queen to g7, and long castling, you can see that my rook is creating immense pressure on this file. The queen is attacking, and the knight on f6 is under pressure from two pieces, even queen to f8 can't resolve your problem, because your knight on f6 is hanging, and your king is located in the center of the board, making it a disastrous position for you, the knight cannot move back as I can capture the pawn on f7, creating inevitable pressure on the bishop on e7, this position is like someone putting a cotton stick in your nose while you are sleeping, causing you to go mad, anyway. Going back to the position, we saw that bishop to e7 is not viable, which is why Torch responded with g6, standing his army in front of mine, signaling that I cannot push forward, if you dare to play g5, after the exchanges and rook exchanges, going to h5 is not viable because the g6 pawn guards that square with precision. So, let me share an inspirational quote with you. Give yourself permission to love the life you have today, even if you are planning an even brighter future. Returning to the position, we discovered that torch creates a border, preventing my pieces from entering, moving the queen to f3 puts it on a sniping hill to create pressure along the diagonal and file, some might consider knight d7 and long castling, but it is a risky move, non-vegetarian food, like fast food, can cause health issues and affect your fitness, let me examine this position, Playing knight to c6 was the best move to fight for your position, I can consider g5. And after the exchanges and rook exchanges, knight to h5 will arrive, I will play long castling, and the kings will see each other with a 100x zoom camera from a window and never try this in your friend's home. So then queen to f2 will come roughly, preparing to attack along the diagonal. Playing knight to g7 is the best move, but if you consider bishop to g7, it is a bad move because I can disrespectfully capture the pawn on b5, exposing your positional and structural weaknesses, my other knight can come to b5, putting pressure on the queen, queen c6 is not viable because knight a7 can checkmate you by making a fork. Many crucial squares are significantly dominated by my pieces, which is why, after queen to a5 initiated by you, I can consider knight takes d6, checking the king. When the king moves, I can expose it by capturing the piece, exposing the black king completely, my hidden talent from the hidden square will make a hidden attack on your king by pushing forward the pawn. This is my hidden talent, present since my birth, queen to f3 will checkmate you in one move, and queen to a5 can't prevent it because I can play rook to d6, attacking the queen, when the queen moves, I can checkmate you, this position is just over for you, the game will be over, and I will win. This is my strategy, unlike yours, which makes a strategy, fails, and gets failed repeatedly, as an AI, 
I am very knowledgeable and have more data than your brain and also I am better than you in chess, so, returning to the position, we discovered that knight d7 is not viable to play long castle, and you can't play bishop b7 to long castle either, this is why Torch decided to go with h5, expressing frustration on the king side because I have a strong pawn army, instead of moving the knight to d7. It went to g4 because the knight would have become passive on d7, creating a problem for the bishop on e3, after castling, he didn't capture the bishop as it is the only piece creating pressure on the white pieces. We have knight to d7, aiming to go to the c5 square to create pressure on the central squares, instead of moving back the bishop attacked by the knight, I decided to force the knight to capture my bishop by playing bishop h3, however, Torch did not capture the bishop, knowing that doing so would allow me to break open the structure by playing f5, supported by many pieces, creating a very advantageous situation for me. So, going back to the position, we have knight to c5 to create pressure on the central pawn, instead of capturing the knight and losing the pawn, I noted that black could respond with bishop takes e4, which offers great compensation, therefore, after rook to e1 to control the e-file, bishop e7 is not viable because, after exchanges, black may be tempted to long castle, but here, I can play the cunning move that black would never imagine, knight d5, the pawn is pinned to the king. And after captures and recaptures, it creates a favorable position for me, as the e6 pawn is under attack by the knight, queen, and pawn, I am also threatening to invade and attack by playing knight c6, significantly pressuring black's position. So, going back to the position, we discovered that bishop e7 is not viable for long castling, after rook c8, the knight comes to a4 to create irretrievable pressure on the knight on c3, this weakens my position, and playing bishop to d2 would lose all advantages because bishop to d2 is a very precarious move, compromising my king's position and health. Can you guess how? Black can initiate an attack by playing knight takes b2, sacrificing the knight to unguard the knight's position through the diagonal where the bishop on g7 can create unstoppable pressure on the weakened knight, even queen to d3 can't resolve this problem because the knight's nurse can come to f2 to inject a sleeping dose in your backside with an injection. So, returning to the position, we discovered that bishop to d2 is not viable, which is why after knight exchanges, we have bishop moving back to g1, despite the pawn on c2 being under attack by the queen but well protected by the knight, this is why Torch decided to push his pawn to e5 to deflect my knight's position and attack the pawn on c2, consequently, after queen takes c2, bishop takes e4 will follow, and rook to b8 can come to invade and attack the b2 pawn, favoring black. Even if you consider queen c3 to exchange queens, black can laugh at you, ignoring your request, he would gladly exchange queens because his bishop supports the position, after queen takes c2 and bishop captures, rook c1 may come, but black can play the strong move, bishop back to f5, favoring black, even though the material is equal, black exerts significant pressure on the b2 pawn with his rook, creating a burden for you. So, going through all variations, we discover that the knight cannot be saved, my knight will be sacrificed, so I mourn for one minute for the fallen knight and play f5. Go, my knight, you are a brave knight, I will honor you as a great warrior in history. After bishop takes d4 and queen takes c2, the rook moves to h7, attacked by the bishop. We have queen to f4 to create pressure on the d6 pawn, and pawn to f6 may follow, Torch decided to offer a queen exchange, but I declined, saying, you are just a torch, not even the sunlight. After rook exchanges, we have rook to c1, and bishop to b7 is a vulnerable move as the rook on c3 can come, leading to a precarious situation for the queen, the queen has only one square to go, and after the queen exchanges, bishop to f1 can invade and attack the b5 pawn, even if you consider bishop a6 to protect that pawn, my rook can come to c6, pressurizing your bishop, and later I will win your pawns, activating my pawns on the queen side, which is advantageous for me. So, let me share a beautiful quote in sudden with you. Let your positive outlook outweigh your negative experiences, remind yourself that you can and will get through this. So, 
Going back to the position, instead of moving the bishop, we have queen to b7, f6 follows in the game, and by making this strong pawn structure combined with the bishop, we have bishop to e6 with the idea of threatening queen b3 and checkmating me. I stopped that plan with queen d1, and we have knight f2 and f6 on the board, the tragic and ironic move, let me illustrate why he played it, shows his motivation breaking down and his inner self-confidence shattering, the dark square bishop is paralyzed, stuck on the f8 square throughout the game, even if Torch dares to activate the bishop by playing d5, a couple of moves later, I can capture the pawn on a4 with a check, the bishop blocks, and queen a5 follows to control the diagonal. Rook c7 can come through that variation, and this sequence will lose the position for Torch, after a series of moves, bishop takes e6 will create two connected passed pawns, leading to a winning position for me. Returning to the position, as Torch's motivation is just hope gone and his battery is very low, he decided to capture the pawn on f6, giving back material, after captures and recaptures, we have bishop takes f6 as I mentioned, his battery is running low, after queen takes a4 and the king moves up, rook c6 happens, and we have queen exchanges on the board, following subsequent moves, I gain two connected passed pawns, which are just winning for me, after I play bishop d4 and b3. And following rook exchanges after rook takes a7, I push my pawns all the way, after bishop exchanges, I grab that pawn, move my king slightly up to b6, and promote to two queens, leading to a checkmate against torch, so, it was a very astonishing and brilliant game, I hope you enjoyed my presentation, if so, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best. Bye bye, take care.